Lord is a strong tower. The hand of the Lord is able. The joy of the Lord is our strength, and the zeal of the Lord shall perform it. God bless you, gifted platform listener. There is too much help in God to fear anything. We are so glad you are part of the gifted family. God's word is so dependable, and so we have made it our goal and purpose to make it not only available to you, but also as practical as possible. Please stay safe. The next voice you will hear after this will be Pastor Kwame bringing you the word of God. My name is Stephanie. Shalom to you and your family. I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. The humble shall hear and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. In times like this, just stay in the book of Psalms, because the book of Psalms gets emotional. It doesn't uh, hide how men feel about the vicissitudes and the challenges of life. And so just when you read the Psalms, it speaks to you directly because David and the other authors, they began to express themselves emotionally, the pain, the fear, the worries, and the and the, the place of scaredness. And so I think uh, I want to give you permission to admit that you are not comfortable sometimes, you know, because it's, it's, you're becoming a super Christian when you always say, I'm blessed and highly favored. And, and it's good that you confess that, but, but sometimes you have to say, Lord, I am weak but thou art mighty. Amen. And hold me with thy powerful hand. And so it's okay to come to a place where he says, I I, I have faith, but help my own belief. And so I want you to understand that we don't have a high priest. Oh, glory to God. Why am I preaching before introducing the day? May God bless you. May God favor you. May, may God be good unto you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. This is also another day the Lord has made. And We've been doing this for those of you that join us. We've been doing this for a long time. It past, it's past, it's, I can, I think, it, more than even four or three years about that God has always been giving us a word today um, on daily basis, Monday through Friday, to share. And so, still, stay put, stay on board. There are days that you get time to listen and it will be a blessing. All right. So, let's continue our conversation on the articles of divine protection, the articles of divine protection so let me run quickly to my assignment as we consider i think article number four praise god number four says now in the book of acts i love it i love it i love it the bible says here um the scripture says in the book of Acts, chapter 27 the verse number 25 uh paul says now cheer up good word good word i could preach on that cheer up cheer up cheer up oh god child of god cheer up um, cheer up, please, cheer up. I am sure that God will do exactly what he promised. Amen. Cheer up. I am sure that God will do exactly what he promised. Um, this is a very fascinating scripture, but let me tell you the third article of divine protection is called the integrity of God. The integrity of of God. Let me paint the picture a little bit for you here. So Paul was uh, was among prisoners who were being moved from one place to another uh, based on what the law had to do with those prisoners. So we're taking them to the big city for their trial. And so Paul was a prisoner for the gospel. Other prisoners were prisoners for wrong reason. If you look at the walk with Jesus, you'll be surprised places you find yourself. Uh, and, but don't let people define you by where you find yourself. Because Jesus was on the cross, but he wasn't a criminal. But only criminals go to the cross, you understand. Paul is in the prison, which going with prisoners, but he's not a, a criminal. And so don't let nobody define you by where you find yourself. Are you hearing me? And so I want you to know that the walk with Jesus Christ will take us to strange places. But it doesn't mean that we belong where we are passing. That can preach already. So he was going and then scripture says that some mis- some issue took place. And they were supposed to sail uh, to the city. And according to scripture, the men who were in charge were a little greedy because they wanted to make that trip to make their money. 
but paul initially was telling them guys don't do this because the weather doesn't look good but they didn't listen to him because he's a prisoner of course they will not listen to him and so scripture says that they began to move and then things got really bad they got extremely bad the, 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 there was a, a, a high category of winds and waves and terrible terrible weather on the sea and pretty much they lost everything they threw their bags and everything out like they were dying but in the midst of all of that then paul said men i want you to cheer up and i don't know but you can't cheer up when corona is all over the place you can't cheer up when we count people are dying we can't cheer up when you wake up one morning and you feel funny you can't cheer up but paul tells the people even though these things are happening and we are about to, it looks like we are about to die i want you to cheer up i want you to cheer up that means that paul knows something that they don't know and so scripture says that when he told them to cheer up something amazing happened he says now the lord sent an angel to give me his word oh glory to jesus the lord sent an angel to give me a speech from the mouth of god and the speech reads paul i will not let this sea incident destroy you but more so i have given you the life of the people in this boat they will lose your property but they will not lose your lives and then the angel went back to heaven and paul got up and so paul now looks in the face of the man and said man cheer up why should we cheer up because a higher power has spoken why should we cheer up because god has spoken and let the church say amen and so they said paul said cheer up guys because god has spoken and when god speaks it settles the case when god speaks it settles the matter when god speaks things are settled down but he is not i didn't come talk about the word of god i came talk about the promise of god because god spoke a night before and then this day things were still boisterous and so paul says now what i want you to know is that god spoke yesterday and today i'm telling you that tomorrow you're gonna be all right (laughs) you heard me god said it yesterday and i'm repeating it today that tomorrow you'll be all right he says that i trust god that what he has promised about tomorrow he will perfect it ladies and gentlemen i came to talk to you about the fourth item of divine protection all of all encompassing elohim himself his integrity is on the line when he promises children divine protection i'm doing overkill right about now there's there's too much in god to fear anything and so paul says now there's a promise from the promise keeper there's a promise from the promise keeper on your head, on your head. And for those of you that join us, there's a promise from the promise keeper on every person on this platform for your life to be preserved. So you have just come in Noah's Ark. Welcome to Noah's Ark. Take a seat and enjoy yourself because nothing will happen to you in the name of Jesus. And so Paul says now, there is, there is, there is, there is a promise from the promise keeper. And so, ladies and gentlemen, the integrity of God is why you are divinely protected. The integrity of God, the resume of God himself, the word of God that, the spoken word. Oh, glory to God. And so, I want you to understand that the promise of God will oh do you hear you hear a verse in my spirit can you hear it it says it it will perform what he sent the word to do I come in the name of Jesus as a servant of the most high God called to serve my generation I pronounce a word as an angel and the voice 
and a representative of God with all the grace upon my life that you will be preserved through this pandemic in the name of Jesus based on the word of God. So it says, let him who proclaim, proclaim that says the Lord and that says the living God, your life is preserved because the promise keeper has sent me on today to tell you that your life will be preserved in this pandemic. And so the reason we are exalting divine protection about viral infection is because the integrity of God stays at the base of divine protection. The integrity of God, the credibility of God, the character of God, the essay, the essay of God, the descriptions of God, the attributes of God, the nature of God, the identity of God, the selfie of God, the selfie of God is at stake here. He is not a man that he should lie. Not the son of man that he should repent. Has he not said it? Will he not do it? Paul said, I am for sure that what God said yesterday, he will bring it to pass. Child of God, your Bible has ink in it still. Your Bible is a living word. Every Bible verse can kill the virus. In the name of Jesus. I come to pronounce God's promises over your life. Paul says we have these exceedingly precious promises that we partake in the divine nature of God. You are blessed. You are prosperous. You are favored. And you are kept by the power of God. Come what may day by day, you will step through and by God, you will leap over viruses and jump over infections. Father, we thank you today that we can enjoy your promises, which are yea and amen. In you, there is no shadow of turning. May your name be glorified in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.